Hello guys and welcome. If you are familiar with my channel you'll know that usually I watch films or TV shows in real time and I commentate on them, review them, react to them, that kind of thing. This is going to be a little bit different today. I am literally just going to sit in my room and talk for about 10 15 minutes, maybe even 20, I'm not sure. It's a little bit of a different format, so if you're used to my other stuff, then this is slightly different. Basically today, I'm gonna to be talking about Blood of Zeus. I have just finished watching it on Netflix, all uh, eight episodes, and I'm basically just gonna talk about it, what I saw, what I liked, what I didn't, what I thought of it, and maybe you'll agree, maybe you won't. Let me know in the comments what you thought, and we'll go from there, basically. So what did I think of it? I thought it was, Fine. Fine. It was fine. And like, it, the thing was with, with this show is that it didn't have to do a lot for me to like it because I love, I love ancient Greece. Anything about it, I'm fucking in, mate. I'm in. I'm in. I'm watching it and I'm enjoying it and it doesn't have to do much for me. I'll be honest with you because let me, let me, let me be completely honest. One of my favourite films, if not my favourite film, is Troy. Troy from like 2004, I think it is, with uh, Brad Pitt in it right? It's not the best film. It isn't. It's not. It really isn't. But as a kid, I loved it. So what you want, so you fucking want, mate. I really like that film because I really like the Trojan War, the romanticism of it. It's horrible, by the way, by the way. The Trojan War is fucking horrible. Ten Year War. Jesus Christ. My point is, is that you don't have to do much for me to enjoy it. And so I was surprised that I didn't really take to this. I didn't. Straight from the bat, right? Let's start off and talk about something that I think in its entire makeup and what the show is built upon, what was so wrong with it, for me, is this conversation, this conflict between the gods, between Zeus and Hera, right? And and, 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 and Hera's right. Hera is right. She, she's got the right to be pissed off, to be angry at Zeus, right? Zeus is going around, he's sleeping with all these women, and Hera's mad. Hera's mad about it, right? She has every right to be mad about it. You'd be mad about it. I'd be mad about it. Maybe you wouldn't be mad about it, but that's fine too. Point is, she is mad about it. Zeus is the bad guy in the situation. Zeus is the bad guy. I feel for Hera. At the beginning of the show, I feel for Hera. And the show draws attention to that, looks in that, and they go, yeah, she's the bad guy. What do you, what do you mean? What do you mean? No, no, she's not. She's really not, but she becomes the bad guy. She does. And like, there is a point in the show at the end where like, I'm so bored by her and I'm so like, fucking hurry up and just get this over with. Like right at the end, when they're all fighting, Zeus and Hera, and Zeus zaps her. Zeus fucking zaps her, mate. And like, it's she's built been built up to a point where I should be rooting for her. She's the good guy in this. But she's been built up as the antagonist and she does some questionable stuff. She does do some questionable stuff. But then Zeus zaps her and I'm like, fucking finally, shut her up, man. Because the depiction of her is, is she's done dirty, mate. She's done, Hera's, Hera's done, Hera is done so dirty. Wasn't done well. And the whole show is built around that. So for me, I was like, God damn it. Do something different. Heron, Heron, the main character, is it just me or was there not much to him? Apart from the fact that he was like a guy and he's got muscles and he's morally righteous, what else is there? Tell me. You tell me. You tell me, right? Because we got to the end of the um, the end of the show and the big showdown between the gods and the giants and Seraphim. By the way, we'll come back to that because Seraphim is probably the only character that's in any way compelling in this. It's very it's very formulaic. The show's very formulaic. It's quite dramatic. The the dialogue is is uninspiring. What is it? Seraphim at one point says, "You're either with me or you're against me." He said that, he said the beginning of that, and I was like, don't say it, don't say it. Seraphim, no, he said it. And that's like a lot of the show, a lot of the show, like they're, 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 they they start saying stuff and you're like, please don't say this, the cliche. And they say the cliche every time, most of the time, most of the time. Back to Heron. Heron, he's so empty. The only interesting bit for me with him was like the final fight. And I was like, why should I care? Like I, it, it got to the point where the dynamic between Seraphim and Heron, got to the point where I cared more about Seraphim at the end and his fight and his battle because he was like, fuck the gods, mate. Fuck them. Fuck them. What have they done? What have they done? They're up there. They're arguing. They ain't doing shit for us. Let's just, we've got the power now. Let's, let's take them down. Let's take them down. And I'm like, shit, I'd be a demon. <laughs> the, the whole reason all this shit is happening, like, yes, okay, the gods, the gods imprisoned the, the giants and, and the demon and whatever in the first place. 
Well done, well done guys. Now now just go away, go away and just fuck off. But like everything that's happening, they're they're mongering within humanity. They're they're shit stirrers. They're they're shit stirrers. The gods are just shit stirrers. The show had all this going for them for them. They had this conflict of the gods, they had demigods, they had magical weapons. Alexia, the Amazonian, she was cool. Barely fucking saw her. Barely saw her, mate. Barely saw her. What do you mean? She was really interesting. And she was set up to be this really cool character that was going to be part of, like, you know, the main crew. And she kind of is the main crew. But not, like, look at the show. Watch the show. Her arc goes nowhere. And I assume if there's another season, they're going to do more with her. Because when they went through the Fields of the Dead, there was this whole thing with this man and woman in, dressed in finery and whatever. I guess that's going to go somewhere. But for this season, she was empty. She's an empty character. Same as Heron. Other than, other than him being, like, this big muscly guy and this righteous character, he just kind of went with the flow. Because, like, I, I found that we were spending, obviously, a lot of time with him because we had to, because he was the protagonist. So, of course we were, but then when we, I was with him, I was like, this is a bit boring, isn't it? That's not how I should feel about your protagonist, mate. It's really not. What did the show do well? I am essentially just shitting on the show. I apologise, because I didn't necessarily hate it. I didn't hate it at all. I just, there wasn't really anything. I got halfway through it, and I was like, ah, oh, this is the show, isn't it? Because I was waiting for the penny to drop. I was waiting for something interesting to happen. You had this big stage. And like at the beginning, it's like, yeah. So um, the ancient Greeks, there's all these stories. Some of them weren't talked about. <laughs> and so you can do, they can do anything. They can do anything they want. And like the, the big, the big uh, there's like two main story points, essentially. Three main story points. You've got Zeus and Hera. You've got the um, Hera and Seraphim. Who, oh, the fuck. When, when it was revealed that Seraphim was the brother, I was like, Fucking course he is. Fucking course he is, mate. I was like, please don't do it. Please, please don't do this cliche, stereotypical, just to dramatise it. Drama! And then, and then you've got the gods versus the giants. And like I found with that final battle, when the the giants, and I, when the giants came into the fray, I was like, I don't care. Soz. The show had built up this conflict between Seraphim and Heron, and then Hera and Zeus. And so, yes, they'd made mention to the giants, but they hadn't built that conflict up. So when they arrived as like the big threat, I was like, I don't care. The two guys, the two guys um, who sold the uh, demon meat, those two guys were really cool. I liked their dynamic. It was fun. And like, I wanted to find out a little bit more about them. I wish we'd spent a bit more time with them because they had character, unlike Heron. Seraphim was, was obviously this conflicted character that I really... I. Like, he was just the typical bad guy. I liked it because he was this typical antagonist, this typical bad guy. He's literally got horns, mate. He's literally got horns. You don't expect much from a character like that, necessarily. As the show dove into him, I did start to feel for him a little bit. Like, he's broken. He's scarred. That doesn't make you inherently bad. And then, like I say, at the end, when he was like, let's fuck him. Let's kill all the gods. Let's, let's, let's do our own thing. I was like, yeah, cool, do that, mix it up, because the show's story beats hadn't supplied me anything that was actually interesting to me. So, and that was an interesting story beat. I was like, yes, do that. And then when Heron didn't go with it, I was like, fuck you, Heron, which I don't think that's what the show wanted me to do. Yeah, yeah, just a little, just a little note, but it was very dramatic. Stuff would happen, and then this big orchestral music would play. A moment of music would happen, and I was like, fucking okay, chill out, mate. Chill the fuck out. And I found myself laughing at it, because it was just very intense. The show tried to take itself very seriously, and I just wasn't feeling it. I wasn't, it hadn't done that for me. But like, there's gore, and there's, 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 there's violence in it. But that doesn't necessarily make me, do you know what I mean? It did that in a way that it was, the show was like, Oh, take me seriously, look at these fucking guys, they're getting massacred, man, they're massacred. That doesn't necessarily do that. It was that whole story between Zeus and Hera that riled me up a little bit the wrong way. I was like, you could do so much more with that because Hera's totally justified. You could flip it around. The show could have confronted this age-old relationship. You know, you always read about it and it's like Zeus, all the gods, all the male gods go out and they fuck other people. You know, Aphrodite, fine, fine. But, you know, you've got Hera who doesn't do that. And you've got this relationship, this in, this relationship that could be so compelling and interesting. And you could have done something different with it. Even if you wanted to, even if you wanted to make her the antagonist, that's fine. But make her that don't have her make all these questionable decisions that do genuinely make her the bad guy. Because she's not the bad guy in the situation, she's not. And like the show was like, yeah, 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 yeah. So you sleep with, you sleep with all these, uh, all these other, all these other people. Um... You're the hero. You're the hero, though. You are. Hey, no, come on. Hey, come on. Come here. Come, come. Sit down. 
Sit down. You're the hero. Yes, you are. You are. Hera, fuck off. That was the show. I think the biggest issue that I have with the show is the characterisa- those characterizations. Heron was, was kind of empty, especially, especially when, you know, Zeus made the sword for him. And he just didn't use the sword ever. He just immediately was immediately threw it away. And then the show never dealt with it again. Seraphim got it. Okay, fine. But like, that was a dumbass decision. And I was like, Heron, don't fucking do that. I have a feeling you're going to be the main character. You're probably going to need it later. When you have a character that constantly makes silly decisions or is like overtly righteous with nothing wrong with them, it just gets boring. It gets boring after a while. And like I said, this this show didn't have to do much for me. I didn't start to feel this kind of way really overtly until about halfway through. Up until getting to the halfway mark, I was enjoying myself. It was Greece. It was, it was ancient Greece. It was, you know, gods and this big conflict and even everything that I've said about it. At its foundation, it is the Greek gods having beef with each other. We get to see them using their powers and they're being powerful. We get this dynamic between the gods and the humans and the demigods and Zeus with Zeus's son. And you have this, these, these, these great anime villains in the demons that you could have done like lots with and, and you had all this... It, it starts with a lot of promise and I think the show could be much better, but I just don't think much was done with the characterization and the story to the point that it was in the end interesting and that was the problem that was the problem but it has so much potential and i think any ip with ancient greece and that kind of thing has so much potential and i think going into going into a second season i think it could do a lot better whether it will or not i'm not optimistic i will be honest with you oh and the final fight between seraphim and heron was so it got to a point where it was doing so many flashbacks that i was like Please, for the love of God, just one of you kill the other. Please, for fuck's sake. And then it had that whole thing where Zeus was like, Heron, turn it inward. And then he stabs himself and I was like, Heron, I don't think that's what he fucking meant, mate. <laughs> it was such a cliche, stabbing, stabbing yourself to get to them. I've seen that so many times, boring. I'm really sorry. And I was like, I was watching it and I'm like, I just watched the whole show. You don't have to do all these flashbacks to build up the, the epicness of it. You really don't. Him getting Zeus's thunder was kind of cool. Was kind of cool. But other than that, oh God, God. I'm always saying to people, I wish they'd make more ancient Greece stuff. More stuff about it because it's so popular. It's so rich and good. And there's so many stories and so many untapped like veins that you could kind of fucking draw upon. And I'm like, please, pe people should make them. And so someone made one and I watched it and I was like, fuck's sake, you know, because it could be so much better, so much better. And yeah, Seraphim was, had this really hard upbringing and he didn't, like Hera was like, kneel, and he was like, no, and she was like, fucking do it. And then obviously he, she, she forced him to. And you have the thing at the end with Hades, for example, doing the exact same thing. And he's, I, I get it, I get what they're doing. He's this tortured character, whatever. But he had every right to feel how he wanted to feel. And then he was fucked by Hera. He got made to kill his own mother. He, he was on this horrible track and you and like he is, he is at the point where he's like let's tear it down and he gives Heron the opportunity to be like look this is how it is join me these fuckers have not done anything for us you hated Zeus at the beginning he's Heron hated Zeus at the beginning mate would you uh, yeah fuck I suppose because he killed his mother that's yeah fair enough fair enough I get why Heron didn't join him but I just found Seraphim much more of a compelling character and he was more autonomous in the way that he acted he was like no i don't want to do that actually oh no i do want to do that yes i really want to fucking kill you though also just a little point just a little point right at the beginning when um i didn't know it was uh hermes with the with the bracelet thing that was like drawing out the souls and that was me i guess just forgetting the the, the history the lore the stories and i thought that was hades and i was like i was like oh great because i was like you know it's this normal looking dude um he looks glory he looks like a god and good finally finally a depiction of hades that isn't this like <laughs> evil guy and uh obviously i was wrong and then obviously at the end we saw hades and and by the way he gave he gave seraphim the biden and it was his biden he said it was my biden you've done good work with my biden no one fucking recognized that no one recognized that it was hades's biden in the fucking first place because i guess and that was the thing as well you have this story and then that's not that original to me it's not that interesting it's not that like shocking and like different to make me go oh ha, oh my god and then at the end you just straight away it's like hades was manipulating everyone all along which is exactly what 
all the like a lot of the fucking stories are man turns out hades had this hand in everything to begin with i guess and i was like fuck you go to all this effort to to do all this stuff to build up all these characters and then you just go hades it was hades and then he and then he rocks up and he got these veins and he's all hades like i love that the depictions of hades that are more sympathetic to him he was essentially one of the brothers he was a god and they were like fucking go down there and do all that work and he was like fuck, okay and he did the work he does the work he's just a god that's been given a like a fucking shit hand and everyone's shitting on him and i think for me the show just didn't do enough of that. It didn't break out of the mold enough. It didn't show me something new enough. And it had all these avenues to go because it was like, yeah, this is a story that's never been seen. And it could have been this whole kind of maleficent kind of, yeah, let's redefine, redefine what we think of these gods and the relationships. And, oh yeah, there's Zeus and Hera thing. Yeah, Hera's got a point actually and it's because of this. And, and she and she did all this stuff, but it's actually justified. And and do you know what I mean? It could have been, it could have been that and it wasn't. And, ah... I wanted it to be. Anyway, I've rambled on enough. Thank you for watching. Down in the description below, I have uh, a few links. I have recently published two novellas, uh, Palace of Fortune and The Light Cursed. They are available on Amazon in ebook and paperback. Go have a look at those if you're interested. But thank you for watching. This video has been a little bit different and I will be doing more of them because it's quicker content that I can get out for you guys where I just talk and it's informal and I, I will miss stuff and I will have missed stuff, but this is just my what how I feel after just watching it um, let me know what you thought of uh, blood of Zeus down below comment please like please subscribe as well that stuff all helps obviously um, but thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one